Now, unfortunately, I can't really tell you guys any of the stuff that we may or may not know yet about the GeForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition because I'd be lying if I said that uh, it hasn't already been on a test bench. But what I can do is open up the box for you real nice styles. This, my friends, if you have yourself a cool 699 US dollars is what will arrive in your homestead. So let's take a quick look at it. This is my first hands-on, even though it actually feels still slightly warm from Anthony, maybe, allegedly, playing around with it. So let's start with, oh fine, we'll do the unboxing thing. Okay, so in here, you've got a dual eight pin. There it is, eight pin PCI Express power connectors to single miniature 12 pin. That's really cool. So the new 12 pin is actually smaller than the old eight pin in spite of the fact that it can carry significantly more power. Well, that's pretty spicy. Also, of course, if you've got a modular power supply, you don't even need to use this. You can get fresh new cables from your power supply manufacturer, assuming that they've got support for it. Also in here, a GeForce support guide. What do we even put in these? Quick start, look at this book, it's a novel. Plug the thing into the thing, plug the other thing into the thing. All right, so some of the big features of RTX 3000 series are of course, Nvidia's new Ampere architecture, giving us better performance in basically every meaningful way from conventional games to uh, novel concepts like ray traced lighting in games or machine learning to upsample, rendering the game at a lower resolution and then displaying it on a higher resolution screen. It's got 10 gigs of GDDR6X video memory, which is a huge bandwidth boost over the previous GDDR6. And one of the big ones here is of course, the extraordinarily unconventional cooler design. So what we're used to seeing is your IO at the back. So you've got three display port and a single HDMI 2.1. That's right, my friends, up to 8K resolution. Right down here is the PCI Express Gen 4 16X connector. All that looks pretty normal so far. Right up here is the SLI. No, no SLI. There will be no SLI except on the RTX 3090. NVIDIA is basically saying, well, if you want to go overkill, you might as well go overkill putting what is effectively the final nail in the coffin of SLI. And then in other unusual news, we've got uh, the fan on the back. So this is pretty normal. AMD has even done reference designs. Nvidia has done reference designs with fans blowing down towards the PCB like this and then exhausting kind of, you know, out like this or out the back. So you can see that right here. We've never seen a full on intake fan on the back of a card. And you know what? Now that they've done it, I guess it makes a ton of sense because if you can pull air in, right here where the fresh air is actually coming in from the front of the case. No, I actually still don't understand why they didn't just put the fan on this side. Let me think about this for a minute. The PCB is here and it's actually, it's actually shaped like this, which is crazy town. And then what they've got to do is the GPU, which is right around here, they've actually got to bend the heat pipes up and away so you can actually see them there. So you can't put the fan on this side because the heat pipes have to be here. So obviously you got to put the fan over on this side because you got your cold air coming in here. You've got your more conventional style fan right here that's just taking that cold air and blowing it out the back of the card and then like, yeah, over here a little bit. So kind of out like this way. Okay, so you got that. And then this one is actually a super unconventional design. So if you look at the uh, the design of the blades here, it's totally different from this fan. See that? Conventional fan spins like that, blows air down. This fan spins like, I believe it's like this, yes, and pulls air up here. So it's, so the graphics card is basically hogging all the cool air coming into your case and then being like, hey, CPU, guess what? You're a lower priority for gaming, so pff, here you go, which, might actually have an impact on some people's setups depending on how borderline they are but unless you're kind of pushing your your you know tower cooler to the limit with an overclock or whatever the case may be i suspect you'll probably be okay before we go any further 
This video is brought to you by the Vessi The Weekend Shoe. It's a new style, but retains all their great features being waterproof, sandproof, slush proof. It's all vegan. It's like a kind of an everyday style, so it can fit almost any occasion. Click the link below to order your pair and use offer code short circuit to get $25 off the weekend. And you can wear them anytime, not just on the weekend. Isn't that neat? Andy was mentioning that there is some confusion about whether this is a reference card. Now in the past, it was quite common to release sort of like a, a design guideline PCB. Founders edition cards have sort of been referred to as reference cards interchangeably in the past with what made them a founders versus a reference card being the fancy aluminum cooler over the last few years. But Nvidia is making it very clear that while this is a founders card, it is not a reference card and there's a separate reference card that doesn't have this unusual shape. Uh, another thing that we wanted to discuss is what this card could potentially mean for small form factor enthusiasts because the unconventional layout, uh, what with the 45 degree angled 12 pin power connector coming out here, I guess the, the airflow design is pretty standard-ish. I mean, it's all going this way, which we're used to seeing, but like, right? How air buffed off by the sandwich layer. Yeah, okay, that's, that's true actually. So if you're using anything like a Dan case, for example, then this, this airflow is gonna be completely blocked. You'd have to have something more conventional where it's right next to the, the cooler. So anything that uses a PCI Express riser to lay the card down flat, you're pretty much gonna be stuck water cooling this puppy. I'm actually really interested to see how water cooling manufacturers approach this challenge. So I'll be interested to see if they have kind of like EP extension back plates on them in order to make them look a little bit heftier when they're installed. The UK water block is only 23 centimeters. With that space, you can pretty much fit, like, fit DDC pump in your small form factor case. That's a design that I'd like to see. A block for this card that's actually designed with a DDC mount right off of the back of it or something like that. So you could just have the whole thing integrated in the space where normally you would just have a graphics card. Now in terms of performance, I can't share anything with you other than what Nvidia has already published on their website, which is that they're saying it's way faster than the RTX 2080 and even faster than the RTX 2080 Ti in spite of not even being the Kingpin RTX 3000 card. That's of course the RTX 3090, which is more like a Titan replacement. And I think that's all the time we have for today, folks, because we gotta put this thing back on the test bench so we can have our full performance review looking at not just performance actually, but also some of the new features. So DLSS 2.1, which is their latest iteration of their upsampling, as well as some of their NVIDIA broadcast features, which are supposed to make life easier for streamers. And of course, I'm really excited to check out their low latency reflex technology and see if, like, like what, does it have an effect on image quality in order to give you that better click to photon response time? We'll have to see if we can pick it up and not drop it. Make sure you're subscribed to Short Circuit, by the way, for more videos just like this one, but hopefully with more depth because we're not hamstrung by our performance embargo. Feels good, heavy, you know, like, you know, bah, you know.